Welcome to the Jesus Calling video story. Emily Lay is a mom, a wife, a business owner, and author. Emily found the demands of her job and her own tendency to seek perfection in all that she did was taking away time from what was really important, time with God and time with her family. Emily shares how she pared back and started simplifying in order to enjoy what really mattered in her life. My name is Emily Lay, and I'm a mom to three kids. Brady is six, and I have toddler twins, Caroline and Tyler. I'm the creator of The Simplified Planner and also an author of Grace Not Perfection and A Simplified Life. My mom was a teacher, and she was flexible and had the availability to do and be and be involved, and was just very present with me. And I wanted that as well in a different way. She made it look easy when I was a kid. It was just my brother and I, and my mom and dad have been married now for 40 years. And I remember there was so much routine and structure, flexible, not over the top, but routine and structure that made us feel safe, like we were part of something special, made home feel like a place of rest, something that was really welcoming. And when I became a mom and was a working mom and you know had all these things going on, I remember thinking, my mom made it look so easy to have dinner on the table every night at six o'clock and all of us to sit down and share about our days. Why does it feel so enormous to me? Like it is just such a hard thing to accomplish. And I had many conversations with her where she said, a lot of planning takes place before you sit down at the table. So that may even sound like a mundane thing, you're just eating dinner, but it's so special, especially with children. And um, she's just taught me so many ways to implement strategy and routine and, and rhythm in our daily lives. Just the stuff that makes life happen, they seem so mundane and no one really talks about it. But my mom had a way of preparing ahead of time so that those things happened seamlessly, so that the rest of life, the good stuff, had space to grow and to be meaningful. And since you know becoming a mom myself, I've learned so much from her about just easy ways to make life happen so that we can really enjoy it and we're not constantly running around with our hair on fire, which is something I battle all the time, trying to do so many things. After Grace Not Perfection came out, it was a really, really busy season. My kids were a little bit older. Um, they were involved in a lot of things. Our business was growing. Everything was good. There was just so many things going on. And I felt very inspired to write about what it would mean to pare back and to really um, get back to the good stuff, to what matters. And for me, that was a simplified life. You know, it's so hard when you're a type A person who wants to do everything and you have many interests and you love your family dearly and you love your work dearly and you wanna do everything. And we think that we can do all the things and we can do them all well. And what I've really learned and what I learned in the last couple of years is that you can do all the things, but you can't do them all well. And so I got to a place where I had to say, there are multiple commitments in my life and things I care deeply about, but which ones matter the most right now? And how can I create margin in my life, breathing room, space for myself to feel creative, to rest? I was traveling a ton and I just felt very spread thin. And so my husband and I together made the decision to cut back on that and to get back to what we love most, which is inside the walls of this house, to be honest. So we really put our family first and said, what falls in line after that? And that looked like making planners for women, equipping them and empowering them with tools to help them organize their lives and make the good stuff happen. And also writing these books that I feel like God has called me to write. So. I feel like the benefits that came out of that were exponential and almost immediate. Um, there was a lightness for me in my heart that I felt like, okay, here we are. This is what we're committed to. This is the direction we're going in. It felt very focused for me. Um, I felt like my husband and I were both very committed to the same goal again. And you know, it's funny. I feel like I had to disappoint a lot of people at that point in time. And that's difficult for me as a pleaser. But I realized that there were four people inside my home that were just delighted to see that they weren't just gonna see tired mom all the time. They were gonna see happy mom. 
And so in pairing back, I feel like I've given the best parts of myself to the people that matter, matter most. I think it's really easy as a woman to fall into the trap that we have to get everything done right away, all the way, at the same time, and constantly feel like we're racing, like we're a hamster in a wheel, that we have to check off the to-do list and do all the things to make everyone happy or life isn't good. And this, this concept of good, like what is a good life, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. And I really believe that if we are giving that part of ourselves, the stressed out, overwhelmed part of ourselves to our kids, to our spouses, to our communities, there's something contagious about that and our entire society starts to feel like we are just drowning in anxiety. And so I started to look at our home. Like how can I calm myself down, calm our routines down? So be flexible, be cool with the, the Legos on the floor all the time, <laughs> the mess. How can I be okay with that but also implement things in my life to make myself be able to take a deep breath when things really get crazy. And that happens daily, by the way, <laughs> especially with little ones. It happens a lot. So I've just found that I have to pause and take a deep breath. I mean, it sounds so elementary, but just pausing the chaos, being still for a minute. I love that verse, um, Psalm 4610, be still and know that I'm God. Like calm your mind, calm your heart for a second, literally your heartbeat, calm it down. And remember that this is just a moment if it's chaotic, it's gonna pass. But what can we do to kind of calm the situation and move on? And being busy and having a lot going on, uh, even in cutting back and having a more simplified life, there was always a piece for me that was missing. And I always felt maybe there is a box I can check to work faith into my life because I know in my heart that that daily interaction with God is missing. And being the tactical thinker that I am, um, I always thought like, what's, what's that box? And it, what I've learned over the years is there's absolutely no box to check. Um, I didn't grow up in church. I, uh, my family is a very faithful family and faith was very important to us. But what I remember from my grandmother who really taught me God, she would sing hymns. And even though she wasn't necessarily checking those attendance boxes, you know, being at church every, every Sunday. She was working her relationship with God into her life by singing in the car and by singing to me. And um, she actually gave me my first devotional and um, told me, this is the way to start your day. So just sitting down, even for a couple of minutes, which couple of minutes when you have three kids and a business, are like might as well be three hours, right? But sitting down for just a couple of minutes in the quiet, being still, quieting your heart and your mind, and spending time with God puts my day in a different framework. It helps me approach my day in a way that is more connected to what matters and less box checking, you know? Um, and so in A Simplified Life, we talk about simplified faith and what that looks like. So how can you have a deeper relationship with God in ways that are easy to work into your daily life that eventually stop becoming like the things I do every day and start just becoming the way you live your life? And for me, it started with sitting down in the morning and having that quiet time and really became that conversation I'm having in my head all day long. And those prayers that are happening as I drop my kids off at school, as I pick them up from the bus stop, um, as I'm making dinner and trying to cultivate this good evening time with my family, um, it's really just become the way you live life, you know? So I've loved reading Jesus Calling in the morning because I love that direct, specific, and short um, reading that really just speaks to things that really matter. Um, life is busy and um, there's a lot going on and a lot of times it's just so special to sit down and really find joy and find truth before you start the day. So I thought I would read today's from my copy of Jesus Calling. Every time something thwarts your plans or desires, use that as a reminder to communicate with me. 
This practice has several benefits. The first is obvious. Talking with me blesses you and strengthens our relationship. Another benefit is that disappointments, instead of dragging you down, are transformed into opportunities for good. This transformation removes the sting from difficult circumstances, making it possible to be joyful in the midst of adversity. Begin by practicing this discipline in all the little disappointments of daily life. It is often these minor setbacks that draw you away from my presence. When you reframe setbacks as opportunities, you find that you gain much more than you have lost. It is only after much training that you can accept major losses in a positive way. But it is possible to attain the perspective of the Apostle Paul who wrote, Compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, I consider everything I once treasured to be as insignificant as rubbish. And I just, I love that because as much as I would love to be in control of every little part of life and have it perfectly organized and structured, life happens and we have to be able to roll with it, to be flexible in our plans and to know that these tiny things that are happening, even though some of them may be huge, they're insignificant compared to the way that God loves us, compared to what he has planned for us. I love the idea of starting my day with um, an intentional practice of looking for the good. So looking for, my mom always says, look for the heroes, look for the helpers. So um, the heroes, the helpers, the good, the, um, the truth. I mean, what more joy is there to know that there is truth amongst all the things we can't explain? There's so much joy in truth to be found. Emily's new book, A Simplified Life, Tactical Tools for Intentional Living, lays out the ways we can pare back, much as Emily did, to enjoy the things that really matter. She talks about some of the tactics she employed that helped her take time for the important things in her life. The idea of organizing and simplifying in general can be completely overwhelming, especially if you are really starting for the first time. And I firmly believe that a lack of simplicity is founded in clutter. And so something that I've always said is that physical clutter is mental clutter. So if your home is full of distractions, of extra junk mail and clothes that don't fit anymore and things that take your attention away from the focus of what you should be focusing on, um, it's not just a physical game, it's a mental game. And so what I say to anyone who feels like this is not attainable, I don't even know where to begin because there's so much going on in my life and in my home, it's to take one tiny step. So, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but you can start by tackling a closet. I always say to go to the most overwhelming place first and get that confidence under your belt to say, I cleaned out the top shelf of my bedroom closet and look how that makes me feel. You know, not only are you gonna have um, just visually something cleaner and less cluttered, but you are going to get ready in the morning in a different way. When you go in there to pick out your clothes for the day, you're not gonna see all the clothes from five years ago that might not fit quite right anymore. You're not gonna have that self-talk happening in the closet. You're gonna see your three favorite pairs of pants and feel good about those choices. So it's so tactical and it, it almost feels mundane a little bit, like that doesn't really matter, but it does. It has everything to do with our self-confidence. Um, it has to do with our morning routine, for instance. If my kitchen is full of dirty dishes or full of you know, tons and tons of clutter on the counter, my morning doesn't go well, especially with two toddlers. So I try to make sure the night before those kinds of things are cleaned up and packed away. Um, we're prepared for breakfast as best as possible. The fruit's cut up and the plates are laid out and ready to go. And it doesn't happen perfectly, but when I do those things and think a few steps ahead, it makes such a difference, not just in the appearance of my home, but in the way my kids feel when they go to school. And that's why it matters. And things don't always go right. I mean, we have mornings where there's dishes everywhere and everything is a mess and you work through that. Um, but when you try to consistently just keep your home and your life and your mental state in a place of calm where it is a little bit simpler, it really, really makes a huge difference. God gives us that we miss when life isn't simplified enough. When I'm running around 
with my hair on fire, there are things that I miss. There are moments, especially with my kids, that I can't appreciate when my brain is somewhere else. When I'm constantly worried about what has to get done or this other commitment or what email is showing up in my inbox. Um, so much of life isn't controllable and let's not negate responsibility, but when we pare back the extra, so much stuff starts to grow and to show its face. And um, that has really been the biggest fruit of paring back and simplifying for me. I, every night now, I try to lay down with each one of my kids to put them to bed and I will sit down, especially with Caroline, and um, lay down with her at night and she's a busybody. She is chatterbox 90 miles an hour all day long. And when she lays down at night, <laughs> she's a lot like her mom. When she lays down at night, she will, she'll look at me and she plays with my eyebrows every night. I'm not sure why. She plays with my eyebrows and she just starts to tell me about her day. And the way that she smiles and the way that her little two-year-old cheeks look, I don't ever want to forget that. And it's it's a season. Like I know all too well, because I have an older, I have a six-year-old, I know how fast it goes. And I know that if I am distracted, I will miss something and I don't want to miss anything. To find out more about Emily's new book, A Simplified Life, please visit emilylay.com.